Hey guys, I'm Vic, and today we're going to be talking about... Come on. Uh, what did I tell you? Come on. Sorry, I thought it was my turn. <laughs> What's up, guys? I'm the real Vic. If you couldn't tell. Well, the real uh, Vic, please stand up. Today we're going on a rant. Deodorant. <laughs> okay, so let me paint this picture for you. Paint you go to a party, gathering of some sort. You don't know anybody there. You start mingling with people. And then all of a sudden, people find out you're a trainer. So you typically get something like this. Oh, I really need to start working out. I need to get back in the gym. You know, when I was in high school, blah, blah, blah. I used to be really fit. I used to do cross country, whatever. But the, the idea is I need to get back in the gym. I know I need to be exercising more. I know that exercise is important and I'm not doing it. Do you ever get that? All the time. All the time. I also get, uh, I used to look like this. Boom, picture. I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> Well, my point being that everyone knows they need to exercise. It's a desire that everybody shares. But the fundamental piece that's missing from most people is taking action. And that's what I wanted to start today with, is the importance of taking action. Especially right now, as we film this, is January 16th, so it's still kind of the new year. Believe it or not, a lot of people have already dropped off of their New Year's resolutions. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about how action is the fundamental difference that separates fit people from people who just want to be fit or wish to be fit. So what do you think? Why do you think people fail to take action, specifically when it comes to exercise? I feel like there's a lot of factors. Uh, lack of knowledge is a big one. You walk in and you don't really know what you're doing. Um, but more importantly, it's uh, just easier to be home. You get home, you're tired. Uh, you wake up, you're tired. This, this society, we're tired all the time. So it's easier to go home, rest, be ready for the next day, as opposed to Getting up, going to a gym, working out. Working out is hard. So it, it, takes, it takes effort. A lot of effort. And um, so I feel like it's lack of knowledge and just being or thinking you're too tired. Because really, we, we can all do it. And it helps. Uh, I know a lot of people have been through it that you're too tired. You feel like you're too tired to work out. You go to the gym and you feel better. You feel more energized. Um, but it's that fear. I think that, that initial fear of either going and not knowing what I'm doing or I might hurt myself or something along those lines that really pushes people back from Yeah, I'd say like starting. I'd say the lack of knowledge is like a secondary thing, but it's not yeah, I guess it could be like an impediment to like starting, but I completely agree about the effort part. You know, obviously it's easier to just not exercise. To just keep doing what you're doing. You know, you're just going to stick to what you're already doing or not doing. And I think that in this society of instant gratification where we're used to getting things easy and fast, it takes a little bit more friction to say, okay, I have to put in all this work in order to start seeing results. I know this is good for me, but man, it takes a lot of work as opposed to everything else kind of comes easy. Yeah. And I think that a lot of people are used to easy and fast and it's just not the reality when it comes to fitness. It's not easy or fast. So, And let's be honest, one workout is hard. So imagine getting in that mindset of one workout isn't really going to do anything for me. I have to do this and make this part of my routine. That's a a hard decision to make for a lot of people, especially inactive people. I'm going to have to work out three times a week. And let's be honest, three times is minimal. That's not an easy decision to make. It's not an easy step to take. So, I mean, I do understand, but that doesn't make it justified. You know, we're, we're really I'm inspiring people to get going, huh? It's like, <laughs> it's going to be really, it's really hard. hard. You got to do it for it's a long really hard time. hard to do it for a long time. Ready? It sounds fun. Like we talked about in our last episode, it's not about making these huge lifestyle changes. It's about making the minimum small daily changes and that are gonna add up over time. So instead of thinking of this daunting task, it's, hey, all I have to do is 10, 15 minutes a day. Today, yeah, just show just, up today. Just show up today for 10, 15 minutes and, and do that consistently. So, I'm the type of person that can't overthink. I overthink too long. If I start thinking like, I have to do this daunting task, I can't. I'd rather think of it, like you said, break it down, have this slice today, tomorrow I'll do this. Like, otherwise it just seems like I'm never gonna get there. Yeah, and I think that um, some influencers are uh, partially guilty for having people believe that they have to do so much, you know? Uh, this is how I train, five, six days a week. This is how I eat, perfect. And, you know, I mean, they may be trainers or, in the, or they're, they're influence, fitness influencers, so they're obviously working out. They have every incentive. They maybe have always liked working out. And uh, the average person just isn't like that. We have to be uh, empathetic to that. So after all that, if someone that's listening right now is stuck in that rut of inaction, what would you suggest that they take? What steps do you suggest they take? I would say stop overthinking. 
stop researching. People get caught in this trap of analysis paralysis and what's the best workout and researching and Google and Instagram and blah, blah, blah. Guilty. And basically it's just overthinking, over-researching, not doing. You know, you want the opposite. You want doing, to show take up. action first, and then figure it out as you go along. But the most important thing is taking action. Why? Because, for example, how many people do you think, like I said, it's January right now, January of last year had the goal of getting fit. And what happened? They did, a lot of them didn't take action or they quit. And what, how many changes could you have made in a year if you would have just been focused, if you would have just taken action in January and just kept going with it? You can completely transform yourself. Yeah, right? so something we say a lot in the fitness industry is that whole uh, think of where you'd be if you started last year, think of where you'd be today. Yeah, abso thing. absolutely. Yeah. It's, it sounds a little corny, a little cliche, but it's absolutely true. If you start now, you have so, so much of an advantage as opposed to starting six months from now or a year from now or two years from and now. The year flies by, you blink and the year's over and you're in a better place physically, mentally, um, just from a decision to start working out. Absolutely. And what's the deciding factor there is that the taking action, it's not oh, I found the perfect workout, oh, I, yeah. this, this is the perfect diet for me. No, it's none of that, that's, that's secondary. The first thing is I took action. And yeah. how many people do we know or have we heard of that? They didn't know what the heck they were doing in the beginning. They were just, oh, I'm gonna start by walking because that's all I know how to do. Or I'm gonna start by doing these crappy push-ups in my home because I got, I got nothing else and I have no equipment. But they saw results. They saw something, yeah. And then um, eventually they did something better and they just, you know. I think, um, if you're stuck in that rut too, or like if your fear is, I don't know what I'm doing, or I don't want to show up and make a fool of myself, or I don't want to show up and hurt myself, you can either go to the gym with a friend who knows what they're doing, everybody has that friend that's a gym rat knows what they're doing, have them help you out, uh, seek a professional. Um, PSN, or, country club, my yes, leagues, leagues, we're looking for you. Um, or uh, just show up and try something. You never know what you're gonna like. You might like the elliptical, you might like a rower. We all have different tastes. I can't run on a treadmill. Um, I feel like a hamster, but Try something and you might like it, you never know. Switching subjects here, a lot of older people are curious or they want to start working out, but they feel like they're too old or like, I can't make a change this part of my life at this stage of my life. What do you think uh, you would say to people like that? I'd say it's understandable for them to feel that way, especially if they have no experience with weight training. It can be, it does look a little bit scary from the outside looking in and you usually see younger people doing it. You know, there's like a younger bias towards weightlifting. Uh, but I would say with the right strategy and if you do it right, there's absolutely no need to be afraid. It's no exaggeration to say that weight training may be the most important thing that you can do as you age. I call it the fountain of youth. So as we age, we naturally lose muscle and our bones become more brittle, our bone mineral density goes down, women go through menopause. These are all changes that with weight training, you can help prevent a lot of that the age-related decline in, in physical capacity you can really delay it significantly you know, there's a lot of clear data on that so as far as the need to strength train i'd say it's absolutely critical as you age for everyone at any age but definitely more important as you age so the i think people have it backwards it's like oh yeah i used to do that when i was younger now i'm older now i, I walk or i do something else it's like you know less demanding but really you should still be weight training of course, not to the capacity that maybe you did when you were young, or let's say you never did it when you were young. Uh, you start from the beginning with very basic movements, but you can do a lot and you should definitely be strength training in some uh, form. Yeah, and it's definitely easier if you've done it your whole life, but if you're just starting new, it looks scary, but it's absolutely a necessity. Um, the secret formula I would say is never stop, of course, but that's easier said than done. But it's never too late to start. You can always start with the most basic of things, something that you feel uh, like a squat might be daunting to some, but a squat is literally getting up and down from a chair. So get up and down from a chair 12 times, start baby steps. We always say baby steps uh, or seek a professional, seek somebody that's like trained, that's willing to help you. Um, that's a really good point about the squat because it's one of the, the main uh, movements that we start to lose as we age. So if you ever see like a really old person who's kind of weak. Car, this is how they get in. Don't fall. And then you do the turn. I've seen it. I've seen well, it a lot. that or seen the lot. way they get up the, from the chair, they use the arm. <gasps> yeah, a big excessive they, forward lean. Yeah. They're not using their legs. Their hip flexors are weak. So it's, you know, the squat, that's one reason right there. That's a fundamental reason to do it. The other thing, too, is that when, when you think of weight training or strength training, you don't necessarily have to be heaving these heavy weights around you know strength training could be with resistance bands it could be with your own body weight you could do a push-up against your kitchen counter and that's strength training controlled movements 
That's it. It's it's anything that works on strengthening the body, the mu the muscles, the tendons, the ligaments, connective tissue, the bones, um, and then the when it comes to to bone mineral density, for example, very important for women because a lot of women end up having osteoporosis. It's very common. So doing strength training not only strengthens your, your muscles, and your connective tissue, but also your bones. Well, funny you mentioned that. Uh, we had a client a few years ago. You remember Aura? Yeah, absolutely. Um, she had pretty severe osteoporosis, and her doctor said she was at a high risk. Uh, if she had a fall, she was at a high risk for breaking a bone. And she started strength training with us, and she took it very seriously. She was coming three times a week consistently. And it's uh, important to know how scared she was in the beginning. Do you oh, yeah. That? She, yeah. She was very, she very had no confidence in, in her physical abilities. Yeah. You'd tell her, grab some fives and she would think it's too heavy or she was afraid she was going to hurt herself. But after a while, after a proper training uh, with a good support system and she went back to the doctor, uh, he was saying that she had reversed the osteoporosis. Uh, he was actually amazed with the results that she had seen. And I think my favorite part was that she was confident. She was coming in here, grabbing weight, doing her own warm ups. Uh, free to move more, free to play with her grandkids, things that really we all want uh, that quality of life once you start reaching an, an older age. Yeah, absolutely. That's a really good point. It's it's not the stuff that you can do in the gym. Of course, that is impressive when you see an older person doing squats and deadlifts and pull-ups, which she could do a lot of that stuff. Yeah. But it's the independence that you gain outside of the gym. It's being able to do the things that you enjoy doing, playing with your grandkids, going for walks, you know, staying active, gardening, that the, the strength training will help you absolutely improve those things and, and keep you doing those for as long as possible. Yep, that's the goal, All right? Yabbity, 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 yabbity. That's all, folks.